Chapter 5, Senior Secondary Schools My first senior school was in Garston, which was Francis Coombe Secondary Modern, as I had failed at the 11 plus. It was at this school I first heard a boy play a tune called Apache by the Shadows on his acoustic guitar, and I was very impressed. Michael had already started at this school and did well at cricket, boxing, football, basketball. I was no good at any of these things, but rather my interest was in my radio hobby. I soon learned that my brother had a reputation in the school as a boxer, and I recall attending the school competition of sports, and Michael won the boxing at that event. He would have been in his fourth year and about to leave school. On this occasion, my Uncle John and Dad were there, and Uncle John, after Michael's win, went and congratulated the loser in order to keep him encouraged. Parents were like that in those days. It was towards the end of my first year at Francis Coombe Secretary Modern School that I ventured out to London on the train with a friend of mine, Paul Dorrington. This was to visit the second-hand electrical shops to buy radio parts. I loved visiting Tottenham Court Road for this purpose, and it was at one of these visits that we stumbled across Soho and noticed the strip clubs. These aroused my curiosity, and Paul and I plucked up the carriage and paid to go in and sit at a table. We could see a nude lady sitting there in a chair and were given a sketch pad and a pencil and encouraged to draw her a picture. I felt I was growing up. Afterwards, we paid one or two more visits and became wiser. In 1962, we finally moved to Wilston, a village near Tring, and both my brother and I went to Tring Secondary Modern School. I can remember my brother wearing winkle picker shoes, and some of the girls from the next village couldn't help but say, Oh, look at those shoes. They were just different, and I suppose they felt threatened. It was during this time that I taught myself more about radio and amplifiers, and I became absorbed in this hobby. I met a man in the village called Clute Turney, who was the man to know about televisions and radio, and he gave me a lot of help. He taught me about valve amplifiers, and allowed me to build a power amplifier from all the spare parts that he had. It was a push-pull amplifier using PX4s, which were triode transmitting valves. I had to rewind the driver transformers in order to get it working. I learned a lot from Clute Turney. On one occasion, I was able to connect a microphone to my amplifier, and I directed the speaker out of the bedroom window and spoke to the people outside our shop. On this occasion, I saw a woman in her rear garden called Ethel, and I called out with the amplifier as loud as possible, saying, Ethel, Ethel, I'm watching you. I heard many years later that she thought it sounded a bit like God speaking from the sky. To occupy myself, I made things of interest. I made a go-kart with a large wind sail, a pair of stilts, and all the kids in the village wanted a pair. On one occasion, I made an electric shock machine with an ignition coil and a battery and a mechanical vibrating mechanism used in an electric bell. I tested it out on the kids in the village by getting them to hold hands in a circle and one kid at each end holding the electrodes. When I switched on the machine, they all got an electric shock. It was a success. It was during this time at Wilston my brother got sent to his first spell in detention centre. He had made a knuckle dust at school in the metalwork class and tried it out by hitting a boy from the next village, causing grievous bodily harm. What happened was, some lads had found our moped in the field and had a go at riding it without our permission, not that they would know who to ask to get permission. My brother thought he'd sort them out for using it, but I think it was just an excuse to try out his knuckle duster. When the police called in, he made out the knuckle duster was made as a part for the moped, and my mum was certain this was the truth, and she defended my brother to the hilt. I knew it wasn't true, and my brother did a spell in Oxford Detention Centre for three months, for grievous bodily harm. I didn't go along with my brother's violence and couldn't understand it. However, his reputation spread, and at school, the teachers identified me with him and were wary of me. After about 18 months, we moved from Wilson to Aylesbury, as my mum found working in the shop and in the village too hard, and she almost had a nervous breakdown. It was whilst living at Wilston that I learned to ride the moped. This was around an orchard, and eventually, when we finally moved from Wilston to Aylesbury, I took the moped engine with me. It was a 50cc NSU Quickly, and I took it home. 
we moved to a brand new house on the new Bedgrove housing estate. I put the 50cc NSU Quickly engine in a homemade go-kart. I used a set of three-wheeler rear wheels and various parts from a cement mixer and began to ride this machine around the roads on the housing estate. I was eventually stopped by the local police and warned that it was illegal to ride this go-kart on the roads. Soon after that, the local newspaper came and gave me a write-up in the Bucks Hill newspaper. This is what it said. An Aylesbury boy was able to return to school after the Easter holidays and proudly tell his friends I've made a go-kart in the holidays. He's 14 years old, David Clark, 37 Finmere Crescent, Bedgrove. On Sunday of last week, a friend gave David, pictured above, an old moped. As he was unable to ride it, he's too young, he dismantled it. He then made the cart frame from some pieces of wood, four old wheels and a set of handlebars and a moped engine. Within three days it was in working condition. David estimates it would do 20 miles an hour. Incidentally, David, who has lived in the town for only a month, has very little real interest in engines. His main hobby is radio construction work, and one of his proudest possessions is a transistor radio which he built, which is slightly larger than a matchbox. It was during this space of time, before returning to the new school in Aylesbury, I met another lad called Ian Mottram. We encouraged each other to steal push bikes. In fact, the first day I went to school, I stole a bike to come home from school on. I eventually got a BSA Bantam motorbike, which my brother had stolen from the Aylesbury College with some other lads. I kept this in the field on the Bedgrove Estate. This was great fun to have a motorbike, and I could ride across the fields to school and return home during the lunch hour. However, one day someone stole the bike, and I was informed by Ian Mottram of someone who had, he thought had taken it. I went to that person's house early one morning, joined my paper round, and found a motorbike in its garage. It wasn't my bike, but I took it anyway. This ended up by me being charged with garage braking, and I was put on probation for a period of time. During this time, I had no sense or knowledge of God, neither did it concern me.